In this video, we'll explore the basic oscillators in the Web Audio API. In our code, we've already wired up, so to speak, an oscillator, assigned here to var osc, and we've connected it to ctx or context.destination, which is our audio output. As well, we're calling the start and stop methods to trigger and stop the oscillator. Now, the default oscillator that plays out of the box is a sine wave, and it sounds like this. However, there are other oscillator types that we can use as well. The four basic oscillator types that the Web Audio API gives us are the sine, the triangle, the square, and the sawtooth. So let's try each one of them out and take a listen to how they sound. Now we get access to the various types through the type property on the oscillator object. So we can actually confirm that the default type is sine by typing osc.type equals sine. And now if we play the oscillator by saving the file, we hear that we get the same type of waveform as we did before, because sine is the default. But now let's go ahead and set oscillator type to something different. Let's set it to a square wave. So oscillator.type equals square. And then save. So what you can hear is that this produces a different kind of sound now. Whereas the sine wave before had more of a pure and simple tone, the square type has more of a buzzy character to it. Now let's go ahead and try the triangle wave. So oscillator.type equals triangle. All right, and let's hear the sawtooth type. So each oscillator type here is giving us a different type of sound or timbre. Now here's a visual representation of these oscillator types. You notice that each one has a different visual shape. What we're looking at are representations of the voltage shape of the various waveforms. In a synthesizer, the synth oscillator creates a periodic rising and falling of voltage, and that's what results in a particular type of waveform. By the way, the x-axis here represents time, and the y-axis represents amplitude. Now, the sine type, as you can see, has a more smooth and rounded shape than the others. If we look at the square type, for example, it has very definite and hard symmetrical ups and downs to its wave shape. Looking at the triangle, although it's pointy, it has more gradual ramps up and down to those points. Now the sawtooth here on the bottom, this one takes longer to ramp up to its pointed peak, but then it takes a sharp and abrupt drop. And by the way, there's a variation of the sawtooth which is basically the same wave shape, but inverted. So that one starts with an instantaneous ramp up, followed by a longer ramp down. And you see, because the wave shapes are different, different harmonic content is generated by each one of them. On one extreme of the spectrum, we have the sine wave, being the purest and simplest, with basically only its fundamental tone being heard. The sawtooth is on the other end of the spectrum, and it's the type with the most overtones and harmonic content. Now this idea of harmonic content and overtones, let's take a look at that a bit more deeply for a minute. In the real world, instruments like pianos and guitars and violins, for example, they all produce complex timbres. By timbre, I mean the overall tonal quality of the instrument or the sound. It's the thing that makes a piano sound like a piano or a flute sound like a flute. The shape of the instrument, the size of the instrument, the material it's made out of, and other factors, they all contribute to the timbre it produces. But how does this work in terms of waveforms and harmonic content? Well, to understand this, we need to know a little bit about the harmonic series. Now here we have a musical staff, and the pitches on this musical staff 
are the first 12 pitches in the harmonic, or as it's also known, the overtone series. When an instrument plays a pitch, like the pitch C for example, you're not just hearing the note C. What you're actually hearing is a whole series of notes or overtones in addition, not just the fundamental pitch. The thing is, these overtones aren't at the same amplitude as a fundamental pitch. If they were, that would probably sound really cacophonous. Rather, the overtones are blended in with the fundamental, but at a lower amplitude, and this is what gives each instrument its particular timbre. So like all those different instruments that we mentioned before, they all work with this overtone series when a note is played, but the difference is in the amplitude or strength of the various pitches in the overtone series. And that's why we get different characteristic sounds from all the different instruments. Now, going back to the four basic waves that we talked about before, the sine, the square, the triangle, and the sawtooth, each one of these is producing a distinct harmonic spectrum, and that's what gives each one its own timbre. The sine wave is basically just fundamental, with no overtones, and this is a reason why it sounds so simple and pure. It's not complex at all, like instruments that exist in the real world that aren't synthesizers. The triangle wave has a strong fundamental, but its odd-numbered overtones are also very present as well. Now, the sawtooth wave is the buzziest and most complex because all of its overtones are heard, although their amplitude does decrease the higher the overtone gets in frequency. And then the square wave, like the triangle wave, focuses on the odd overtones in the harmonic series. Although these overtones differ in their amplitude and the rate by which their amplitude decreases, compared to those of the triangle wave. And that's why the square wave seems to be buzzier and a bit louder than the triangle wave. 